Hey guys, it's Jordan. Um, I'm here at the, uh, in the region with the biggest megaliths. Uh, I'm going to show you the biggest one I've found so far, but first I'm going to show you this one. Um, it has some features that you'll see extrapolated in the bigger one, and I think it'll kind of train your eye to see what I'm seeing. So uh, with that being said, I'm just going to point out some features and I'll show you them up close. Uh, this right here, um, I believe this to be the head, uh, head representing a rattlesnake. You can see a split in the rock. It has very, very flat sides. This is granite, by the way. Uh, another flat and right angle cut on this side. Uh, in here, you see what would be its mouth, and you can see a piece of granite, a triangular crystalline piece of granite, that I believe represents its tongue. This is loose, uh, but this is very well hidden. It's off the highway, but in thick woods that no one hikes in, and uh, I was here about six, seven years ago, and it was in the exact same spot. So, very luckily, um, no one's been here to disturb this. Uh, it's topped with, a, with an oval-shaped boulder. This is very common for features in the area. Many of them are topped with boulders of this shape. And actually, there is another up to the left that I'll show you in a moment. Uh, another thing to notice is the wall it's sort of sitting on top of. I'm going to show you that now. Uh, looks like it was cut flat. That's very common. You have these, I call them carved cliffs. Uh, there's that second oval boulder up top there. So let's get you a closer view of what's going on here. So this is all granite. Zoomed out. Okay, so let's start from the left side. You can see that sort of uh, shaved side. Um, I'm going to make some composite images for the Facebook groups to show you similarities in different structures across the region. So that's something you see with megaliths in the area. I found multiple instances of these sort of animal heads poking out of these uh, sort of shaved, shaved side base boulders, I guess you could call them. There's another angle on that. But uh, look at how flat the side of this is. And then look at this right angle cut, cut into the side of the head. Very interesting. This is the split down the middle, the seam. And let's go into the mouth now. I'm using my tripod, this is a little awkward. Actually, I'm going to take the camera off the tripod. Uh, accidentally zoomed here. Hold on. Okay. So now you're you're seeing that tongue. Um, I don't. Th let's say you know. Let's play devil's advocate and say this whole thing was natural. I don't think it's a coincidence. This is sitting in here. The top has kind of a scoop taken out of it, and it is loose. I'm just going to show you a little bit. I'm not going to move it much, but there you go. It's just been sitting here for years. And here again, you can see this flat surface of the granite. I don't think this looks natural at all. This looks cut to me. It's very, very smooth. It feels like almost there's like some clay or something on it. Um, there's that oval boulder sitting on top. Uh, let's see if I'm missing anything. That other oval, the flat sides, oval boulder. And uh, that's the side of it. So yeah, that's a little, I call this a serpent serpent effigy um, and uh, I, now I'm going to show you the the real big freaky one uh, downstream a little ways see you in a bit so this right here is what I think is one of the largest megalithic structures in the world it is in New England it's about 30 feet tall um, when I get home I'll do a rough estimate of how much all the rock in this thing weighs uh, but I'm going to show you close up on some of the features. I think if this is your first time seeing this, you're going to think that's just a random pile of rocks. Uh, but if you look through my material, um, you'll start to see patterns emerge of, of what the different features are in this thing. So uh, first, if you remember, um, in the first part of this video, I showed you that snake head with a little crystalline granite insert in the mouth. We have that same phenom phenomenon right here. So what I'm zoomed in on is actually an overhang, and beneath the overhang is a small cavity which is in shadow, which I'll walk up to in a second to show you up close. And there is a crystalline granite insert there, um, and then there's a small cave right underneath. Uh, to the right of that, you see the ferns on top of this big uh, sort of flat boulder leaning against the structure. Um, you see that same shape in many megaliths in the area. Um, I call them trapezoidal blocks. I don't even, uh, <laughs> that's just a rough guess, uh, I don't know, approximation of the shape. Uh, but that's something I have seen in many other uh, structures in the area. Um, so again, there's that overhang, which I'll show you close up in a second. Uh, 
crystal granite insert. There's a second overhang right up here. So I believe these are there to represent either serpent or turtle heads. And the biggest turtle head or serpent head is right up here, this giant block of granite poking out. To the left, you see this big, big flat boulder leaning against the structure with a lot of boulders uh, filling in the center. That's a common phenomenon in the area, which again, why I don't think it's random. Um, so now I'm going to actually walk up a little closer to it and I'm going to show you up close some of these features starting with that cavity. And I think when you see that granite insert, you're going you're gonna to see the relation to the last thing I showed you and really think there's something here. Another thing I, was, I noticed is there seems to be a seam in the, in the base boulders here, right there, the foundation block. So again, there's that, there's that overhang. Uh, just like that serpent head I showed you, it has a very, very flat side. It does all appear to be granite. There is that crystalline granite insert. This one's much bigger. Can't move it at all. It does appear to be wedged in place. There's kind of giving you the idea of the quality of the granite. There's some other rock stuffed in there top of the overhang. I'm going to show you this, and there's, there's that little cave, but there's, there's nothing in there, it ends pretty soon. And here you see the uh, hexagonal block leaning against the structure itself. Now from the side you get more of that idea, feeling of a reptilian kind of head, and there's the second uh, overhang up top. I have climbed up there, uh, nothing much to see up there, just different angles. And there's the underside of the giant turtle's head. Uh, the granite is tinged red. Okay, I'm gonna move over to the left now. Again, you have a big, big chunk of granite uh, with a very flat side leaned up against the structure with a bunch of fill. Side view of the overhang, crystalline granite insert. And there again, you see that shaved side of the boulder, uh, which I showed you on the snake and which you'll see through the season on other structures in the area. And here is a good side profile. So you see overhang one, uh, overhang two, and there's the big, big head of the turtle up there. And I do believe this whole thing is, is not naturally occurring and that it was built by some lost civilization that is, uh, not mentioned in the history books because it was too old and I do believe they're using some sort of technology to build things like this that are uh, not of our comprehension today nor do I think we'll ever be able to figure out how they did it. Thank you.